Hi there, and welcome to this presentation for subject selection for our Year 9s moving into Year 10 in 2021. My name is Matthew Smith, and I am the Director of Learning Programs at the College. Along with a number of key staff from the College, we are presenting to you in an online format due to the current restrictions due to COVID-19. I apologise for any technical or abnormal presentation practices that may come about because of this presentation, but as I hope you can understand, this is all new territory for many of us. Okay, let's begin. This presentation provides a guide for both students and their parents as to the type of programs that are offered at the college in Year 10 and further details the processes involved in students completing their selections for 2021. During this presentation, you'll hear from a number of people from the college's Senior Pathways team. These include Miss Suzanne Farley, Deputy Principal Teaching and Learning, myself, the Director of Learning Programs, Mr. Ray Mitzi, our VCAL Coordinator, Miss Julie Pilioglu, Careers and VET Coordinator, and Mr. John Dakin, our Senior Pathways Coordinator. I would like to commence the presentation with a prayer. In the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. A prayer for journeys growing up and the passage of time. God of ages, you are the beginning of our journey and our strength as we pause along the way. Hold us by the hand as we grow, show us where to seek you, and guide our steps that we may find you. Give us devoted hearts that we may love you and your peace when we reach our journey's end. In the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As with any process, the timeline in which events occur is crucial. And for our subject selection process this year, the key dates that you and your child need to be aware of are the following. So on the 21st of July, we have our Senior Pathways Information Night. This is conducted online. And then students will be moving away with their subject selection forms and an electronic pack of uh, involving course guides and other, other important information. On the 10th of August, then all the subject selection sheets are due. These should be submitted by email to their learner mentors and they will culminate in a subject selection interview with their learner mentors. These subject selection interviews will be conducted between the 11th and the 18th of August. They will be done online via Microsoft Teams and each learner mentor will be given instructions on how to conduct these. It is really important that students note and meet these deadlines and that they submit their forms to the relevant staff by these dates. With that said, I would like to hand you over to Mr. John Dakin. Thank you, Mr. Um, my role in tonight's presentation is to give you an overview of the VCE, which stands for the Victorian Certificate of Education. Now, this is usually a two-year course. Um, students typically undertake Units 1 and 2 in Year 11 and Units 3 and 4 in Year 12. But there are, there are some Year 10 students who will undertake Units 1 and 2 in Year 10 and then, of course, Year 11 students who might do one Unit um, 3 and 4 study in Year 11. Now, Units 1 and Units 3 typically operate in Semester 1, while Units 2 and 4 operate in Semester 2. Now, for a student to undertake a VCE, it does tend to keep every educational pathway open. Most of our VCE students will move on to university courses, uh, but also TAFE courses are open, um, and some apprenticeships and traineeships as well. In order to achieve or pass the VCE, a student needs to pass 16 units of study over the two-year duration of their VCE. Now, that must include at least three units from the English group 
and they have to also have four sequences of Unit 3 and 4 subjects, and then this needs to include at least one sequence from the English group. Now, once a student uh, achieves their a scored VCE, that is, scored subjects at Unit 3 and 4, the student receives an ATAR, and an ATAR is a rank. Now, most universities will use the ATAR to help determine entry into their degree courses. Other courses may require presentation of a folio, an interview, audition, or some other profile form. So that's a quick snapshot of the VCE. At this point, I want to uh, pass over to Mr. Mitzi. Thank you, Mr. Dakin. Hello, parents and students. I'm here to introduce you to the VCAL program, and the VCAL program is the Victorian Certificate of Applied Learning. In this program, we focus on our students to move towards a world of learning and also start to begin the thought processes behind employment pathways. For a Year 9 student, we'll be looking at uh, students entering into the VCAL program at foundation level at Year 10 and then progressing through the program. There's intermediate and senior levels as well. Um, the older that they get, the more progression that can be offered. Each course, it goes over for one year, and uh, students will be enrolled into a Certificate 2 or Certificate 3 courses uh, through, their, um, through their TAFE and also through the school. We run the programs um, at the college uh, with recognition for TAFE qualifications. What we offer is to provide the TAFE opportunities and also VCAL opportunities to provide vocational and practical learning, uh, which is really important for students to demonstrate these skills once they go out onto into the workforce. And we also offer work experience opportunities. Later on, uh, when the student completes a TAFE course, they may be able to enter into a diploma course at university level upon completion at year 12. The schedule for a VCAL student would be the subjects are literacy, numeracy, applied work-related skills. And we're offering this through a product design and technology um, subject alignment, personal development skills, and as I mentioned before, the VET course uh, to, to help and focus on employability skills and also religious studies. If students are interested in applying for a VCAL course, uh, there's a VCAL application form that they will need to fill in. And I will be expecting to see uh, students applying with this application form through um, their application at careers at 4c.vic.edu.au and they'll submit their form online. That will go through um, an interview process and we'll have a, an interview uh, with a student and also members of the, um, the VCAL teaching group just to see what the, the student's passion is and what they would like to do to actually um, why they need to apply for VCAL and what their career aspirations are. Now I'd like to pass on to you Miss Julie Pilioglu to discuss the options at VET at the college. Thank you. Thank you Mr Mitzi. Welcome students, parents, carers to our information evening. My name is Julie Pilioglu and I overlook the vocational education programs that students can undertake in, in the college and I also coordinate the careers programs in the college. Tonight I'll be further explaining the VET opportunities that students can undertake in. VET stands for Vocational Education and Training. These courses are governed by a registered training organisation. They are a nationally recognised qualification and they're highly regarded at the university end and within industry. How does VET work? Basically, students can begin a VET program in years 10 or 11. They are usually a two year program. VET units can be included in the primary four and they contribute to the student's ATAR. It is a compulsory requirement in the VCAL certificate. 
and VET certificates also have recommended work placements and in some cases compulsory. The VET courses that we had many of our students enrolled in for 2000, 2020 We've basically had a Certificate 2 in Animal Studies, a Certificate 2 in Aviation, in Beauty, in Electrotechnology, in Building and Construction, in Plumbing, Health Services, Sport and Recreation, Music, Live Production and Services and Photography. As you can see, the scope of VET courses is quite uh, big and if students are interested and they can't find a particular course they're interested in, it's best that they come and speak with me. All VET courses incur a small fee. Some of our courses are completed on site and others are off site. This means that students are required to travel independently during the school day to study elsewhere for their VET courses and more information can be received from the careers office. In order to apply for a VET course, students need to fill in an extra application form. That's regardless of whether they are studying a VET program on site or off site. And as I said earlier, all VET courses incur a $200 material cost, which is automatically added to your school accounts. And on Monday, the 6th of August, these VET application forms need to be submitted to the email of careers listed there. Choosing your senior school program before you choose your subjects, there are a couple of things that you need to remember to do. One is to think about your future. You need to decide what subjects that you're good at and what you like and you need to be realistic. You need to check the prerequisites for specific courses, so you need to research your courses. If you visit the Caroline Chisholm Catholic College Careers website and go to the VTAC tools. You can look at the VTAC course search there and look at prerequisites. Right now we can't attend university open days. However, the universities have got virtual tours and information sessions happening online. And it's important that students actually tap into these information sessions to ensure that they're aware of what the prerequisites are for courses. And obviously once you've done those preliminary checks, then you can start to consider your studies as you're moving across into year 11 and 12, you might wanna consider trying them at year 10. I'd like to now get Mr. Smith back on deck so that he can talk to you about the selection process. Thank you, Ms. Pilioglu. I'd like to just uh, reiterate what uh, Miss just said then. There are several factors that influence what program and which subject students select moving into year 10. The three key areas that we like students to focus on are their interests, their capabilities, and their pathways. These areas should form their judgments that they're gonna make during the subject selection process. However, we do offer three types of programs for the students to consider. And they're, they're listed here on this slide, but the programs are a straightforward year nine mainstream program, you also have a mainstream year 10 program that may involve an accelerated learning program, which is a sequence of a VCE unit one and two completed at year 10. Normally VCE units one and two are completed at year 11, but we uh, identify certain students that may be capable of entering these subjects in year 10 and be able to complete them quite successfully. You might also want to complete a year 10 program with a VET course, and we do offer this to our students moving into year 10. The third type of program which we offer students, as Mr. Mitzi has spoken about, is the VCAL program. So the main question for students when they're going into this subject selection is, what is their program going to look like? From then they will select their subjects, but they need to decide what type of program they are going to undertake. Now, from experience, we know that the vast majority of students elect to under, undertake a mainstream program. Now, this may include an ALP, it may include a VET, but the vast majority do mainstream year 10 program, which involves their English and mathematics undertakings, as well as their RE undertaking, and a number of electives that, that would be comprise their timetable. 
So when they are selecting a mainstream program and they have to select uh, their Englishes, they have four units of English to select from. However, they only select two. Now these are semester-based units. So the options for them are English 1, English 2, English language and literature. Likewise, when they come to select their mathematics, they must select one mathematics, which is a year-long unit, and these options comprise of mathematics, sometimes we call it a general mathematics at year 10, and the advanced mathematics. Now we would be really advocating that students don't select subjects that are beyond their capabilities. So if your son or your daughter is not a known student to be strong in mathematics, then we wouldn't advise them to take on the advanced mathematics course. Likewise with the Englishes, normally English language and literature, those subjects are normally taken up by those students who are quite proficient in the, in the study. Students will then also have to select their RE. Now, they will need to select from Religion and Society Unit 2, Text and Traditions Unit 2, or our school-based RE Journey in Faith. Now, there is a bit of a catch here. If a student is wanting to select our school-based RE program, then they need to get approval or the recommendation from their current RE teacher to do so. So I'll just say that again. If they are wanting to select our school-based RE program, Journey in Faith, then they need to be recommended to undertake that subject by their RE teacher. Then students will be asked to select what we term as study streams. So we have two study streams on offer for mainstream year 10. There's study stream one and study stream two. Now study stream one is a full mainstream year 10 program and it does not include any accelerated learning program. Study stream two, however, is with an accelerated learning program. So those students selecting study stream two would be those students who are choosing to uh, select to do a VC unit one and two in year 10. I'll just make this note here. Students and parents need to make, to understand that a students apply for the accelerated learning program. It is not automatic entry into it. It does go through an approvals process through uh, our heads of learning. They need to approve that the student is capable of moving into VCE units one and two early. This is what the second page of the subject selection form looks like. As you can say, it comprises of two columns. Students are only expected to complete one of these columns, and that will be dependent on which study stream they are choosing to study. So if you are wanting to take in study stream one, that is, not including a VCE unit one and two, then you would fill out the left-hand side column and you must select eight subjects. If you are choosing to select study stream two, that is that you're applying to do an ALP program, then you must fill out the right-hand side column only and you must select six electives and at the very bottom, identify which ALP subject you are applying to undertake. Your selections must comprise of the following. It must comprise of one science, one humanities, one health and PE, and one arts and te all technology. So where do you find the information as to what subjects are being offered and the description for each subject? Well, if you go to the college website and look at the curriculum tab on the college website, you will find what we term as our course guides. Now, moving into year 10, you want to refer to the course guide years 10 to 12. This is the Bible of um, the college's programs. It, it describes in great detail what each subject um, entails, 
also gives you um, great information as to what potential pathways you could pursue by undertaking such subjects. So really we encourage all students and all parents to be reading this information and to making their judgments based on the information provided through these guides. We'll also be providing you with an electronic pack. So this will be provided through the Virtual Careers website, but it will also be provided through Compass. Now in the pack you will find the following information. You'll find Year 10 and 11 information on the courses of study leaflet. You'll find a VET leaflet of information. You'll find VCAL information. You'll find your Year 10 subject selection form. You'll also find a VET application form and a VCAL application form if you're choosing to undertake any of those courses. If you are a student and you're thinking about applying for an accelerated learning program, then you will also find your ALP application form in this electronic pack. It's really important that you access this, this resource and that you use it accordingly to apply for the different programs or nominate the subjects that you're wanting to undertake when you're moving into year 10. So students applying for an accelerated learning program, as I said, this must you must complete a request to study a unit one and two VCE subject in year 10 form. These forms are due to the careers office via their web, uh, sorry, by their email by the 6th of August. I'll just say that date again. These forms are due to the careers office by the 6th of August. It must be endorsed by either your relevant subject teacher and or learn, learner mentor, and it will be reviewed approved or declined by the appropriate head of learning. The process that we want our year nine, oh, sorry, year 10s moving into, uh, sorry, year nines moving into year 10 to follow is to do the following. Step one, download the course guide. Step two, download your subject selection form. Then you need to connect with the relevant subject teacher about any elective you have questions about. Naturally, students will have questions about what subjects they want to move into, and we are advocating that you talk to your subject teachers about this. Then you will need to complete the Year 10 subject selection form online with your parents. The form is designed so it can be electronically signed by your parents, completed by yourself electronically, so you should have no problems doing that. Then we ask that you save a copy of this form to your desktop, and then email the completed form to your learner mentor by the 10th of August. Then your learner mentor will work with you around it to schedule a time where you'll conference about your subject selections, and this will be conducted through Microsoft Teams. Then your learner mentor in this conference will enter your subject selection to web preferences, and your subject selection process is then complete. You just need to make sure that all of these steps need to be completed for every, every student by 5 p.m. on the 18th of August, 2020. I would like now to hand over to Ms. Pilioglu, who will discuss the processes moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Smith. So where to from here? Students and parents will notice on Compass an electronic subject selection package whereby students and parents can download the information required to make their subject selections. This will also be found in the Virtual Careers Office via Teams. In the next few days and weeks, you'll select your senior school course, so you need to be ready to make an informed and sound decision. So you need to talk to your current subject teachers to get advice regarding your suitability to study specific subjects. Talk to your house coordinator, your learner mentor, your parents, and come and visit the careers office or send an email and speak with other adults to get the relevant information to help you make your subject selection. Find out what subjects you need to get into your chosen career and course through VTAC course search research the industries that you're thinking about moving into. Watch the learning area videos following the link attached 
on click view so that you can understand the subjects that you are thinking about choosing. Come and talk to me or other staff of the Pathways team regarding your plans. All the subject selection forms will be completed at your interview time and they will be entered on the day that you have that interview with your learner mentor. My advice is start planning now. If you've got any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact one of us from the Pathways team and we wish you all the best of luck. Thank you.